Hello again. You know, people who are first learning how to free motion quilt are always in a real hurry to learn those skills very quickly. And I'm asked real frequently, what are my best tips for learning how to free motion quilt? Well, today I'm going to give you my tips for learning how to quilt a really big quilt on a home domestic sewing machine. But first, let me give you my best tip if you're really trying to learn how to free motion quilt fast. My number one tip is that you don't want to try learning these skills on a large quilt. <laughs> yes, you heard that right. A large quilt is very bulky and weighty, and while it's very possible to quilt large quilts on a home domestic sewing machine, it's going to require a completely second set of skills that involve mechanically engineering that quilt, both the part of it that's inside that tiny harp space, as well as the rest of the quilt that's outside the machine. Now we're going to talk about all of that today, but you don't want to add these challenges if you don't already know how to manage a small to medium sized quilt sandwich yet. Set yourself up for success by learning these skills on small quilt sandwiches that are easily manageable. This way you'll learn the roadmaps of how to create many different free motion quilting designs and you'll also perfect how to control a small to medium sized quilt as it moves across your machine bed. Once you've got those skills down, you'll only have one set of new challenges to overcome when you move to large sized quilts. Now, when you're getting ready to quilt a really large sized quilt, the preparation of that huge quilt sandwich becomes even more important. Make sure that you've done an A-plus job of basting it together, and I would also recommend pre-winding as many bobbins as you possibly can. Once you get going, you want to minimize how frequently you must interrupt your quilting to wind new bobbins. The most challenging part of quilting a large quilt on a home domestic sewing machine is always going to be how you deal with that tiny throat space on your machine. As you work, you're going to want to work in a way that you're always positioning the quilt in that throat space so that the smallest possible amount of bulky quilt is what's in that throat space. And that's going to involve frequently rotating your quilt as you work. Let me show you what I mean. For the purpose of this discussion, let's say that we are going to quilt a quilt that's 100 inches by 100 inches. In this diagram, assume that any area in red is that portion of the quilt that has already been quilted, and remember that our goal is always to minimize the amount of bulky quilt that we will fit into the throat space. Now because you can rotate the quilt as you work in order to alter what is actually being fit into the throat space at any time, this means the largest piece of quilt that you will ever need to fit into that throat space is actually only 50 inches. Phew! <laughs> Don't you feel better about this already? This should also tell you that for any quilt, the hardest and most challenging part to quilt will always be the center of the quilt because this is when you'll have the greatest amount of bulk to fit into that tiny throat space. Thank goodness there is only one center per quilt. Now, let's think for a moment about what would happen if I did not take the time to rotate the quilt as I worked. If I were to begin quilting on the right side of my quilt to minimize how much quilt I'd have to fit into the throat space, things would start off fine because there really wouldn't be much bulk in that tiny area. But as I continued to quilt, the amount of bulk would grow and grow and grow, and eventually, once I'd quilted beyond the center line of the quilt, I'd have to fit 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 inches of bulky quilt into that space. He gads! This would make quilting a large quilt unbearable, and that's exactly why you always want to rotate the quilt as you work. You'll also find that many of the strategies you learned for stitch in the ditch quilting really won't help you with quilting a large quilt doing free motion quilting and they may actually get in your way. Let me show you an example of what I mean. Another tip to remember is that many of the strategies you learned for straight stitch machine quilting like stitch in the ditch quilting 
not only won't work for you with free motion quilting, but sometimes they will actually work against you. A good example of this is rolling the quilt so that you can place the roll into the throat space. I highly recommend against this in free motion quilting because the very bulky nature of the roll actually makes it harder for you to be able to manipulate the quilt as you constantly change direction to stitch out your free motion design. Remember, stuff or shove the quilt into that space, but don't roll it. And in addition to the quilt that you're fitting into that tiny throat space, don't forget that you're also going to have to manage the rest of that bulky quilt. What do I mean by that? I'm talking about the huge quilt that's outside the throat space, taking up a huge amount of space on your sewing table. Let me show you how to manage that. As I've already told you, your biggest hurdle in this whole adventure is learning how to manage this large bulky quilt in that tiny throat space but you also need to effectively manage the rest of that bulky quilt that's outside of the throat space. You need to maintain some control over that part of the quilt, or because of gravity, it will start to pull against you, and this will interfere with your ability to make nice, uninterrupted movements to create your stitches. So let's take a look at my workspace without the quilt so you can see how I solve this problem. You can see that this is not an expensive setup. My sewing space is a hollow door lying across two cheap metal file cabinets with a sheet of medium density fiberboard lying on top of the door. This fiberboard is a recent addition and it has helped tremendously to reduce vibration. I have an 18 by 24 inch plexiglass extension table that fits right up against the throat of my machine and this creates enough level surface area for me to quilt a giant size quilt. As long as I bunch up enough of my quilt so that excess quilt pools around the edges of my plexiglass table, I am able to make nice, smooth, uninterrupted movements of the quilt to develop beautiful stitch motifs. But let's go back and look at a picture of the space without a quilt so I can show you something else. Sometimes, as you work, it will seem just as if there's so much quilt that it's going to swallow you up, and frankly, it's just plain in the way. You can minimize that by bringing easily movable furniture up against the left side of your quilting table. If you adjust your ironing board so that it is the same height as your table, or roll up a lightweight chest of drawers to the same area, this can help support your quilt as you work and it becomes one less thing to worry about. Probably the very most important piece of advice I can give you has to do with having a large flat level surface across which you can move your quilt. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now I want you to see how small the bed of my machine is. This is important because this is the area on which your quilt sandwich will move. If I were moving a small sandwich, this tiny bed would not be an issue. But if I were quilting a medium or large size quilt, this would make it much more difficult to do a good job. In fact, it would be so hard that I'd be tearing my hair out and there really would be no fun in it. Let me place a large quilt here so you'll see what I mean. Can you see that the weight of the quilt is pulling it down and making it virtually impossible for me to guide the sandwich over the bed with smooth movements? I am really straining with my arms and my shoulders to move this large quilt because the weight of this quilt is pulling against me. My arms and shoulders will be sore later from this, and because the quilt is pulling against me, some of my stitches are jerky and I'm just not happy with some of the shapes I'm stitching. This is not a positive experience. You can overcome this issue if you have a cabinet that allows you to sink your machine down into it, creating a level surface, or if you can get yourself a plexiglass extension table. Both of these systems will allow you to smoothly move a quilt across that level surface. Let me show you what I mean. You can see that it's not necessary to get your entire quilt onto this level surface but you want to gather enough of any side that you may be pulling on as you work 
onto that table top so that as you move the quilt with quilting, nothing is impeding your movements. In other words, arrange your quilt so that it pools around the edges of your plexiglass table and this slack will keep it from pulling against you as you work. If you buy or make one of these tables yourself, I would aim for an 18 by 24 inch table because anything smaller than that really won't be helpful if you're working with a large quilt, but if you go much bigger, it becomes awkward when you need to remove the table to get to your bobbin case. One more benefit of these tables is that you can buy a moonlight for a couple of dollars and if you place it underneath the table you have an automatic light table for tracing patterns. So there you have it. Really, if you can set up your sewing space so that it will support you in doing this kind of large scale work, and remember a few of the guidelines I told you about how to position the quilt on your machine bed, it really is possible to quilt huge size quilts on a home domestic sewing machine. Remember, you can do this. It may take you a lot of practice, but you can do this on your home domestic sewing machine.